What's up guys and gals, your host with the most, Griever as always, bringing you guys Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 162 Chapter Review. And thank you everyone so much, I already said it on last night's stream, but uh, thank you all so much for getting me to 700 subscribers! I hit 700 subs yesterday, that's pretty cool, let's keep that number and let's raise it up to 800 by Christmas, okay? I want 100 more subs by Christmas, it'll be like a Merry Christmas gift to me. Alright, so, but that being said, let's jump into this chapter, because honestly, not really a whole lot happened. Um, the first half of the chapter is, they fight, and I don't like, I know a lot of people have complained about this, so I'm not going to get a bunch of hate about this one, uh, but the helicopter uh, characters are weird. The binding vows, cursed energy, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, I don't like it. I think it's stupid. I think it's stupid. They're using their hair. It's like, like that's that was done back in like the seventies of anime and the eighties and stuff. And it was like it was dorky then. The fact that they're trying to make it like cool now and stuff. Like if you're gonna use a hair power, like there are some badass people that use hair powers, right? Like hair, it becomes their strength or their power or the tendrils or whatever. It was done in Inuyasha. It was done in Toriko. It was done in it was done in a lot of things. And um, it was done well there, but for the most part, I would argue that the most of the time it's sort of dorky or there for a gag or a laugh. And right here, they're trying to make it serious, but it's such a fucking joke, I can't take it seriously. I couldn't take this fight seriously. Not only are these people fodder, as Yuji just beats the beats the shit out of them anyways, Yuji manages to one-shot, one-shot these people. Well, two shots, this weird bearded or mustachio man. Um... Honestly, didn't really care. Didn't think this guy was, like, worth anything anyways. And so now, like, we're jumping into the colony and we're beating up fodder. Like, okay. And not only fodder, but really stupid power up fodder. Like, really dumb powers. So, uh, but what do you guys think? Maybe I'm being too harsh? That's a possibility. But I just think that realistically, like, we did not need this. We did not need the the hair girl with the with the fighter jet on her fucking uh, turn her ponytail turns into a fighter jet, and we didn't need uh, Buddy with a top knot turning his fucking uh, his his samurai knot into a goddamn uh, propeller of, of a helicopter. It was just, it's just kind of dorky and dumb to me. Um, but that doesn't mean I didn't like the other part of the chapter. The other part of the chapter was pretty good, and this this was ended very very quickly. Sure, the choreography of the fight was fine and all that jazz, but either way, um, Yuji takes this guy out pretty uh, straightforward. Just punches him and then kicks him, and then he's done. So, uh, and I almost felt like there was a missing panel between when he was gonna punch him and when he actually punched him. It felt like. Okay, like, like there felt like a weird, like a skip and trans transition. Like there should have been one extra panel in between him getting ready to punch him, but he coming close and then he hits him to me. I don't know. It, just when I first read it, I was like, did I miss a page? Did I miss a panel? No, I didn't. And it's not a big deal, but I just felt like, wow, okay. So he was ready to punch him. He was talking about what he was going to do. And then it just happened. Like we jumped to the end. We didn't actually see the connection. We didn't see Buddy chasing him. We didn't see Yuji throwing the fist. It was just... Boom! He's already smacked him in the face. So, anyways, um, then the uh, the other guy who was like the spotter for the helicopter, weird uh, people obsessed with airports, couple, whatever they are, um, he shows up and basically says like, I know uh, Yuji is uh, like Itadori. Itadori is from you know uh, uh, the junior high. He's the tiger or whatever they call him. Some weird nickname. Yuji doesn't even like the nickname surprisingly, but. Uh, it seems like we have a bit of deception going on because as this guy says, hey, I was just with them, just try to stay alive, that kind of idea. And it's like, well, wait a minute now. I'm getting a little confused here because this this person is saying, hey, uh, you know, like he's thinking to himself, like he's on guard, blah, blah, blah. So he's thinking something, something's a little weird, but he says like, I know you because you're famous and blah, blah, blah. The problem is, is that who do we believe here? Who do we believe? Have we seen this person develop, uh, have powers? And why are they part of the Culling game? Because it would mean that he was already automatically a player like Yuji was automatically signed up. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, this was something that was really confused. Because as we do that part, we jump away uh, back to Fushigoro and the new character, forget her name, uh, but she basically says, yeah, non-player civilians that were in the colony were let out. They, they, they can leave at any time, right? So this guy must have some cursed energy or, or something. 
I don't think we've seen him use it or whatever, but it seems sort of weird that he has it. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But according to her, players who were inside the colony to begin with when the colony dropped, they can't leave. But that, but, like, they didn't agree. Like, I, I'm getting a little confused here. It's sort of like, um, like, like in Reboot, like the game comes down and everybody caught in it. It's like, well, you're fucked. Whether you're a game player or not, whether you're a gamer, doesn't matter. You're caught in the game and you have to follow the rules of the game. But I thought that everyone, other than some select people like Yuji and stuff, and that's probably a vow or something like that that happened uh, way in the past because he's, host, he's the host of Sukuna, they should all been a, have been able to leave. According to her, players who were inside the colony to begin with. But wait a minute now, you're not actually a player until you agree, is what I thought. Just like when they entered the colony, they agreed, yes, we will be become players. Um, so just because they have a hint of cursed energy, whether they're a sorcerer or not, uh, I didn't think that automatically made them a player. But apparently, according... But she could be lying. I'm not 100% sure. See, this is, this is where the confusion comes in. So I'm not going to spend much more time on it. But I think I'm a little confused. It sounds like, okay, so nobody, anybody without Cursed Energy, they were they can peace. Basically, Maki, if this dropped on Maki, Maki could leave. Like, before everything that went down. But Maki could leave. Because she couldn't use Cursed Energy. So Maki would be able to peace. Yuji would have been able to peace. By, by the looks, well, he was already signed up, but that's a different kettle of fish. But you guys know what I'm saying? So the colony drops, the limits are set, and people who basically, by the sounds of it, people who are jujitsu sorcerers automatically became players without any prior knowledge. It was just bad luck. Oh, I'm going to visit uh, Okinawa today, you know, and I'm from Kyoto, you know, and they happen to be visiting and boom, it drops on. Ah, well, shit, bad luck. Seems a little broken with the game now. The culling game doesn't, I don't think it's supposed to work that way, so... What do you guys think? Let me know. But once again, she, she could be lying because that's the point of this chapter is um, here we go into the entire explanation that like she's like it's kill or be killed. People who have been in the colony have been fighting do or die for 12 days. It's already been 12 days since the culling game began and it's been do or die. Everybody's been fighting already. Fushiguro's thinking about all this and stuff. And there's a little bit of so basically they're asking where Hug uh, Higurama is. Both uh, of both people, they're both asking. Fushiguro's asking the girl, um, and um, I, I believe his name's like a uh, Rin, uh, uh, something like that. Rin, Rinny, Ren. Anyways, uh, the the other guy is Rin, the guy with like the Jewish cap, um, and he and Yuji ask the same question, like where is Higurama or H Higuruma, H Higuruma, Higa Higuruma. Anyways, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. I'm terrible at that, but. They both give a different answer. One says the Shin, Shinjuku, and the other one says uh, Iku, uh, Ikuba, Kur, Iku, I don't know how to say that district name. I, I, and I think I'm missing a letter there. But anyways, one begins with an I, one begins with an S, and it's two different districts uh, in, in the area, of course. So they both ask. So one of them is clearly lying. And we see this at the very end here because they're both going to go somewhere else, and they both think that the other one is going to figure that out, and they'll meet up there. Uh, and then we meet this dude who's chilling in his underwear, got a cool tattoo, got a pretty decent design, weird ass facial hair, weird ass facial hair, um, and long hair, and says that somebody is bringing them the, his next prey. Now we don't know who this guy is or anything like that. He seems to have like a lot of, it almost looks like a photography room, like he's got a bunch of photos, like like he's in one of the red rooms of a, of a photography, um, so maybe that's... Uh, I'm believing that that's probably an idea of his power, something to do with cameras, lenses, photographs, photography in some way. Um, that's what I'm taking from it. Or it could be, uh, these could be um, those like talisman things that in Japan, you know, you write them and you hang them on the Christmas tree or the New Year's for a good wish or whatever. Um, wish for your miracle and you tie it to the, the branch or whatever. Um, could be something like that instead. Uh, but I think they're meant to be photos. So, but either way, uh, he's, he's there sitting in a dark room, believing that, so one of them is working for this guy, either the chick or the guy wearing the Jewish hat. And we don't know which one it is because it was a really cool panel showcasing that they both like one, they said the same thing, but one's telling a different location than the other. So which one do we think is lying? 
I have no idea in actual fact. It's probably the one with Yuji. Not going to lie. I don't think it's the chick. Um, if it is the chick, it'll probably be... She's probably going to stick around for a while. I don't think she's inherently evil. She probably has to work with this guy because she... We sort of got this backstory. Like, it's too obvious. That's why I'm calling... I think it's the other guy's lying. I think the girl's not lying because we're, we're supposed to suspect her because she says this whole, there's no guarantee you won't kill me. Uh, you know, it's been do or die, kill or be killed. Modern day sorcerers are the ones revived from the past. Nobody cares about that anymore. You got to stop thinking of those as separate things like people are getting high on their own power it's 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 a dog dog eat dog world uh right now so this could be her method of survival is working with this guy right that's that's a very classic that's that that's been done in every form of fiction in every genre ever we've seen that sort of thing go down with the with a new character being introduced so because it's that obvious and because we have this information about her I think it's the other guy. I think it's the guy with Yuji. I think he's probably the one working with this fella, leading him to the thing and stuff, and the whole, like, uh, and the, probably the helicopter couple were also working with this guy or something like that. You know, th to me, that's where I'm putting my money, but I could be wrong. Or one could be lying. Technically speaking, I suppose they both could be telling the truth. Like, they, like, and by that, I mean, they honestly both believe what they're saying. They believe that Higuruma, Higurama is um, in Shinjuku or the end or the other one that begins with an I. Uh, they could actually believe that, you know, so they don't think they're lying. And we're just being led down a red herring trail by uh, Gege, uh, who's basically saying, oh, who's lying? Who's lying? It's like, neither one. There's a third option, option C, you know, so maybe I don't know. What do you guys think? Either way, I thought the chapter was okay. Um, nothing really too important other than who's lying and who's the new guy. And what's his power? I think it's photography based. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. That's it for the review. Thank you once again for 700 subscribers. So don't forget the four tenants. Like, comment, subscribe, and the fourth and most important one. Drink responsibly, as always, as your host with the most always does. And we will see all you beautiful people again next time for JJK Chapter 163. Looking forward to it, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out.